So when we want to debug code, the best way to get started is to test the code on values for which you know the answer. Now I have deliberately given you these kinds of distance speed time formulas because I know you're familiar with them and I know you can also do the calculations by hand. So let's actually run this buggy code. Uh, let's run it on some simple values. So let's say our initial speed is uh, zero and let us say the uh, acceleration is one meter per second square and let us say we do this for one second. So you can work out exactly what the correct answer is supposed to be uh, for distance, but let's just run it. And we see that the distance one function reports a distance of 0.5 meters in this case. And the distance two function clearly responds with a nonsense answer. I mean, we began with an initial speed of zero, but then we had an acceleration, a constant acceleration of one meter per second square for one second. So clearly we would have covered some distance. So definitely the uh, distance two function has a bug in it. So let's try and see why this is. I mean, the formula is S is U times T plus half A T square. So what could possibly go wrong? Well. Let's plug in the values. u is 0. So if u is 0, then obviously u times t is going to be 0. But uh, this half a t square uh, should be positive because this is half times a, which is 1, times t times t, which is 1 times 1. So this should be half or 0.5. So in fact, it seems that the distance 1 uh, answer is correct. It should be 0.5 meters. But this is somehow returning 0. So why is it returning zero? Let's take a look at this expression. So the first thing I want you to note about this expression is it's a mixed expression. Remember we had seen this example in the lecture of x plus one where x was double and one was an integer constant. Something very similar is going on here. Uh, the variables a and t are double. So this expression a times t times t, that's a double. But what about this expression in the brackets? Well, that is 1 divided by 2, and 1 is an integer, and 2 is an integer. And by the way, this expression is inside brackets, and we know that brackets are computed first. So if we have 1 divided by 2, an integer 1 divided by an integer 2, then this is going to do integer division. Now you might say, well, why doesn't it recognize that this is a fraction and produce a double answer? Well, the rules of C are such that if you are doing a pure expression in one type, then the calculation is done in that type. So one divided by two is going to report an integer. Now that's going to be a wrong answer because obviously one divided by two is 0.5, which is not an integer. Now the fact that this is producing the answer zero tells us that that integer 1 divided by 2 is actually 0. So it's actually truncating. It is discarding the value after the fraction. So 0 0.5, the value 0.5 is being discarded and we're just left with the integer part, which is 0. And this is, in fact, what C does in general. When you have an integer division, it always discards the fractional part. Even if the fractional part was 0.999, it would discard it. So it doesn't round it, it always truncates it. And in this case, this is the reason. So one way we can fix this is, of course, we can replace this uh, 1 divided by 2 with 0 0.5, which is a double constant. And if we uh, try that, so let's stop this run and run it again with the same values. Initial speed zero, uh, one meter per second square for one second. And this time you notice that both distance one and distance two return the same answer. Let's just test it for one more uh, input and see if we uh, can see anything else as we're experimenting with it. So let's just double the acceleration. We'll keep the initial speed the same. Let's double the acceleration for maybe the same amount of time. And let's see what that produces. And we notice that, again, it produces different answers. 
So uh, one, distance 1 tells us that the distance is 4 meters, whereas distance 2 tells us that the distance is 1 meter. Now we can work out by hand that the distance 2 answer in this case is correct. So that means we have found an input on which distance 1 produces a wrong answer. So again, we'll do exactly the same steps. We'll plug in these values. So u is 0, a is 2, and t is 1. But the distance 1 function expects u, a, and v. So firstly, we have to figure out what v is. That's the final speed. And you know the formula. Uh, v is equal to u plus a t. Um, so if uh, a is, uh, in this case, 2, and t is 1, u is 0. Right, so uh, v is equal to 0 plus uh, 2 times 1. So that would be uh, v is equal to 2 meters per second square. So we're really talking about an instance where initial speed u is 0, a is 2 meters per second square, and the value v, the final speed, is 2. Right, so what is this supposed to compute? This is supposed to compute 2 square, that's 4 minus 0 square, so that's still 4, divided by 2 times a, and a is 2, so it should be 4 divided by 2 times 2, so 4 divided by 4, it should be 1. And you can see that the second uh, answer, distance 2's answer, is correct. But this is reporting 4, so this is computing 2 times 2, minus 0 times 0. This is a pure double expression. Over here we have a mixed expression. Maybe that's the problem. You know? And you can always try these guesses out. You can say, oh, well, I just realized that I made a mistake with mixed expression, so maybe I'll play it safe. I'll make it a uh, pure expression with a double. Uh, I've replaced the constant 2, which is an int, with 2.0, which is a double. And maybe that's going to fix the problem. So I can always try this out um, and run it with the same inputs, 2 meters per second square over 1 second. The answer should be 1, but we notice that again it is incorrect. So while this may have made a difference, in this particular case it makes no difference. So we have to look at this expression very, very carefully. We know that the first thing that is being computed is the stuff inside the brackets, and that is v times v minus u times u. It doesn't seem problem at all. Then we are doing a divide by 2a. Now here we have to be very careful because we are dividing by 2 and then multiplying by a. Do we mean that this whole expression is in the denominator? Well, mathematically, yes, we want the whole thing to be in the denominator. It's possible that what is happening in c is it's putting the 2 in the denominator and then taking this whole expression and multiplying by a. And that would put the a in the numerator. And we don't want that. So let's be safe and put round brackets around this whole expression to indicate that this whole thing has to be computed and that is in the denominator. It turns out that this change is going to fix the error because what was happening before was exactly the problem that the a was being multiplied later on and it was being multiplied in the numerator. Now, one way to answer this is by simply trying out these changes, experimenting with it, and realizing that these things can go wrong, uh, and keeping in mind that there are certain rules in which, with which these expressions are evaluated. I personally prefer just putting extra brackets wherever I am not sure what the correct order of operations is. As a programmer, I want to be very clear uh, to anyone reading this code, including myself. I might want to read this code in a few months. So I wanted to make, be very clear that I want to calculate this expression uh, in the denominator uh, altogether. So it turns out that by not putting the brackets, I was actually getting an error. You can even go back to the integer 2 and you'll find that it works correctly. That was not the problem because if you have an integer 2 times a double a, the integer 2 will get um, implicitly typecast as a double and there would be no problem at all with 
producing the correct answer. So with these changes, um, these two uh, functions are now debugged. They are producing correct answers. Let us switch over now to the other function that we were trying to debug, which was this buggy absolute value function. So we have said that the way we're computing the absolute value is by taking the square root of x times x. So mathematically, uh, this makes sense because the SQRT function returns the non-negative square root of the given argument. So if I have an integer x and I square it, that's going to be a non-negative value. And then when I take the square root of that and report the uh, non-negative square root, that would in fact be the absolute value of x. So mathematically, this is fine. But it doesn't work. Well, how do we know that? Let's test it as usual. So let's try it on some fairly big number. I'm going to put 40,000. So 40,000, it's a positive number, so its absolute value should be 40,000. And what gets printed is two numbers, two answers. The first one is using the built-in ABS function. And the ABS function is defined in math.h, which I have included here in line 21 of the program. The second answer is being computed by our buggy ABS function. But in this case, it has produced the correct answer. Um, let's try a different number. So I'm going to try a bigger number. I'm going to try 50,000. But notice that 50,000 is still within the representable range of integers. On my machine, uh, integers are uh, in the range, representable integers are in the range minus 2 billion roughly to plus 2 billion roughly. So 50,000 is not a problem. That's a representable integer. So let's try it with 50,000. And in this case, you see that the buggy ABS function has returned a clearly nonsense answer. I mean, how can the absolute value of 50,000 be this crazy number? It turns out that this crazy number is the minimum representable integer. But what is going on? So again, we look at the code, and now that we have an input on which this fails, we can examine exactly what happens. So when x is 50,000, we are computing x times x. 50,000 is an integer, and 50,000 times 50,000 turns out to be 2.5 billion. And we have said that the integer uh, that are representable on this computer only go up to about 2 billion, 2.1 billion. So 2.5 billion exceeds that limit. And we know what happens when integer expressions exceed the upper limit. They wrap around to the uh, bottom end, the negative numbers. So what's actually happening is that this expression x times x as an integer multiplied by an integer is being computed as an integer. Now it turns out that the SQRT function uh, expects a double argument. So if we are passing it an int, that int is being implicitly typecast as a double. So what's happening here, the order matters a lot. Since x is an int, it will first compute integer x multiplied by integer x, which for 50,000 is going to produce a negative integer. Then that negative integer is going to be typecast as a double, so it will be a negative double. And then we see the problem, because we're asking SQRT to compute the square root of a negative value, so it's going to throw some nonsense result back at us. It turns out the SQRT function returns a double. Now notice that our buggy ABS function returns an integer. So the value that is being returned by SQRT, that double value, is actually being implicitly typecast right here back into an int. But that's not the problem. In fact, I could explicitly typecast this, the answer back into an int, and that's not going to solve the problem. I can just rerun this code with 50,000, and we'll see that with 50,000, it will still produce a nonsense answer. So that's not the problem. The problem is what's happening with the arguments. And as I said, we don't want this to be computed as an integer multiplied by an integer because that's overflowing. So what we have to do is 
tell C that actually we want to compute this quantity as a double because that's what the SQRT function is expecting anyway and we don't want it to do it the way it's doing it. So we'll put an explicit typecast here. So I'll say convert this first x into a double. So the expression in the parentheses is saying convert x into a double. Now I can also do the same for the second x but it turns out I don't need to do it because if the first expression is a double and the second one is an int we know that the second one is going to be implicitly typecast as a double. For better readability, you could certainly do the explicit typecast. But let's just leave it like this and run it with, firstly, let's run it with 40,000 just to make sure we didn't mess up. So it's still the correct answer. And now let's try it with 50,000. And we see this time it works. So this is one way we could have fixed the error. Of course, if we really wanted to compute the absolute value uh, of uh, uh, x, uh, we should be using the built-in function abs, uh, which is there for exactly this reason. So the point I wanted to make is that we should try and use built-in functions when they serve our purpose. But here is an example where using the built-in function doesn't serve our purpose. So we have to understand exactly what's going on here. And now we have seen in both these two debugging examples, the potential dangers of implicit typecasting. Of course, there are other dangers that we have to be aware of. And I want to give you this flavor of what it takes to debug code. The general steps are try and run it on inputs for which you know the answer and observe the values. And if you ever find an input on which the answer is unexpected or wrong, then you take that particular input and trace through your code and try and understand exactly which line is causing the problem. Now in both these examples, uh, our functions were simple. They were simply just return some expression. And so it was fairly simple to find exactly where the error was. In general, this is a very challenging task. And uh, this is one of the key skills that is required in industry to be able to identify where exactly in the code the error is, the bug is. It is, turns out that it's actually much easier to find inputs on which the code fails. But to go from there to a fix turns out to be much harder. So I've given you a flavor of what that feels like and later in life you're going to see many many more examples of this. So keep this in mind.